Hello and welcome to week two of Gateway to Success. And this week we're going to talk about academic success. But first, I want to remind you, if you haven't already, uh, make sure that you click on the videos tab. And the intro and module one video is in here. I think most of you uh, completed module one, so great job. Uh, to you guys, those of you who haven't, uh, you still have, oh, about a little over a week. Uh, you need to have something in by February 21st. So I'll send out some reminders in uh, next week's video. I'll also remind you, uh, and then I'll also send out some emails uh, if you haven't uh, done uh, Module 1 yet. So anyway, watch that video. Module 2 video will be in uh, shortly. And then you also, I would say at the beginning of each module, uh, other than watching this video, you're going to want to always click that course deliverables list and make sure that you've completed all of these items. Okay, so let's scroll down to, to, to module one. We did some welcome uh, activities. And then module two, we're going to get in to a little bit more of the details regarding academic success. So here are a couple, it uh, looks like two, four, six little items we need to check off uh, this week. So let's get right to it. Come into modules, scroll down, click on module two, academic success. And by the way, if you uh, want to work ahead, you're more than welcome to. Uh, all of the modules are open. So Feel free if you have the time to work ahead. All right, so we start off module two with a discussion board. This particular discussion board gets into course delivery types. Uh, at Gateway, we have several different options for course delivery types. You'll probably find yourself uh, sticking to maybe two or three of the options. But uh, anyway, there's a, a link in there I clicked right there, course delivery types. That'll open a Google Doc that goes through uh, all of our different course delivery methods. I'm not going to go through each one, but I do want to touch on a couple of the more common uh, course types that we have. Blended uh, is a in-person and online. So a lot of lab courses will be blended. Um, Generally, less than half of the instruction will be <clears throat> online with a blended course. So if you typically, uh, if you have a four credit hour course, if you have a full face-to-face -face, uh, section, you're going to meet for four hours a week. Now, if you have a blended section, you would meet... Uh, say three or four or two or three hours a week instead of all four okay so you'd still meet the majority of the time in a blended course if we go to a hybrid which is very similar to a blended the difference is you meet less than 50 percent of the time face to face so if you meet normally four hours a week for a face-to-face -face course. In a hybrid, you may only meet uh, one hour a week. In fact, uh, some hybrid uh, instructors, you may meet uh, every two weeks or every two or three weeks, something like that. So anyway, hybrid, there's a, there's a lot more flexibility. It's, it's almost an online course. You know, like I say, all instructors are different but uh, you will have a few, if not uh, weekly, face-to-face -face meetings, but they would certainly be a lot shorter than the typical four-hour uh, full-on face-to-face course. Um, we also have the course, it's not listed on here, it's, da, 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 I guess the online or INET, we also call it async, and so we, we, uh, are doing our particular gateway to success as async, also known as online or INET, 
online. You work at your own pace. There are usually uh, due dates and checkoffs that you have to do and checkpoints that you have to meet. But generally, uh, this works really well for folks with a busy schedule or those who just find it uh, to be just as uh, valuable, the learning experience, just as valuable uh, in an online setting as they would in a face-to-face -face setting. In fact, a lot of most online instructors and online courses are gonna have videos and uh, lecture content. And so anyway, you're experiencing that right now in this particular section of Gateway to Success. We're doing an async or uh, INET course. All right, and then kind of going along with that, and this is the last one I'm going to talk about, is the OSYNC. Uh, that's also fully online. However, you do have weekly um, Zoom meetings. So anyway, that's the OSYNC. That means online synchronous. So 100% of instruction delivered online via video conferencing platform. So attendance is going to be... Uh, generally more monitored or required even uh, for an online synchronous course versus an online INET or async course. Uh, generally, uh, we like to see students logging in uh, at least once uh, a week uh, or more if possible. So, but the, again, the attendance policy is a lot looser. All right, so anyway, you can read through some of those as well, uh, on your own. Uh, and then you're going to want to take a short quiz. There's a link there. And it goes through, uh, and you may already know this about yourself, but go ahead and take this short 10-question uh, quiz, and it'll tell you, uh, and as you're taking it, you'll kind of see the writing on the wall where the, the quiz is going. But uh, you'll be able to, you know, determine whether or not online courses are something that uh, would be good for you or uh, maybe not so good. You're more of a face-to-face -face kind of learner. So anyway, take that quiz. And, and, you know, before you take it, you may have an idea already, I would assume, what you do prefer. But um, having said that, when you do take the quiz, uh, take it with an open mind, read the questions uh, thoroughly and answer them honestly. And, uh, you know, maybe, you know, the results may show something a little different than, than maybe you thought uh, that uh, you would be able to handle. In fact, a lot of students don't really think that they would want to do online courses. They end up uh, taking this quiz and they you know, to think about it a little bit and the, the results say that maybe they would benefit or would do fine in online courses. So anyway, take that short quiz. And then as with, with all of these discussion boards, my recommendation is to copy and paste these three questions uh, right into your comment box and, and kind of go from there with your discussion. Okay. And again, watch video from week one if you're unsure how to do discussion boards, but I'm not going to go back through that. Um, we're going to keep her moving. Uh, growth mindset is the next thing uh, that you're going to want to check out. There's a little folder. Notice, too, these icons change. Uh, I think I might have mentioned that a little bit last week, but you can see this is uh, got the little speaking bubbles. That means we're looking at a discussion board. And then this is like a file folder. So that means that when I click that, it's going to open into uh, a file that's going to have uh, multiple items for me to look at. So we'll do that in a second. And you can see kind of a little journal uh, icon there. Okay. And an assignment, little dog ear page. All right. So anyhow we go over to this growth mindset folder. And what we see uh, is a little uh, brainology article. So you can click on that. Yeah, it's about six or eight pages. Um, you know, you can read through it. Uh, you could skim through it. Uh, you know, however, all of you learn and, and read and, and understand it at different uh, levels so uh, and different interest levels is more or less what I mean. So you know you can scan that or or read through it thoroughly. Yeah. 
talks about growth mindset. Um, and I'll talk about it uh, briefly here in a second. But there are also a couple of videos that I'd like you to watch. Um, there's a thumbnail. You can either watch it right in Blackboard or you can open it and then go out into YouTube if you'd like. Same with that uh, thumbnail there. Okay, so there are five videos that I would recommend that you take a look at. They're short and very informative. Okay. <clears throat> and growth mindset, uh, in essence, uh, for all of you, because you're now taking the plunge into uh, Gateway and, and to college itself to learn the tools necessary uh, to uh, apply into some sort of profession uh, that you choose, your chosen major. So what's going to happen uh, along the way is you're going to be faced with all kinds of different challenges. And uh, a growth mindset just uh, states that you're open to these challenges. You're open to different experiences. Um, you're going to be viewing uh, and, and these experiences with an objective uh, focus and an objective lens. You're going to... Uh, uh, generally uh, ask questions uh, in your mind and uh, and when it's appropriate uh, ask them uh, out loud along the way and you're going to be all you're also going to be helping others um, and answering their questions as well so you'll learn about active listening and and really um, I mean uh, most of you if not all of you um, are going to be uh, working with uh, other people, whether it's colleagues, uh, customers, uh, supervisors. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we want to have an open mind and, and uh, have a growth mindset uh, when it comes to working with each and every individual that we encounter. So uh, anyhow, read that article, uh, see how it applies to you today. I see, think about or reflect on maybe how it applied to you uh, in the past or how maybe you could have used this information in the past. And, uh, and then certainly moving forward, how all of this uh, is going to matter and be meaningful to you, uh, both as a student uh, over the next couple of years and as uh, a future employee in the workforce. And so, yeah, very interesting and fascinating uh, information. Now, the opposite of a growth mindset, uh, or, or the kind of the other end of the spectrum, if you will, is what we call a fixed mindset. And again, I, I want to reiterate that um, you know there are times when we have uh, had experiences that uh, etch themselves pretty deeply uh, into who we are and, the, and, and establish kind of a fixed mindset uh, for future potential experiences. And so, again, reflect on that. And uh, maybe it's okay to be in that comfort zone of having a fixed mindset uh, under cer certain circumstances. So maybe you don't uh, like to... Uh, eat a certain type of food uh, or you don't like to go to a, a certain uh, uh, town or a certain state or, or city because you've had uh, bad experiences. Uh, maybe there are types of, of uh, just like they say, past experiences that have generally not left you with very uh, positive uh, uh, experience overall. So anyway, um, it's okay to have a fixed mindset, I guess is my point, uh, in, in certain uh, aspects of your life. So, but uh, as a student and, and certainly as, a, as an employee in the workforce and, and helping others and uh, solving problems, we definitely want to have uh, more of a growth mindset in that area. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of put that out there too. Uh, let's see, let's go back to our module. Okay, so go through that folder and, and read through that as well. There's another link you can click on. And then once you've you've gone through and kind of reflected, like I say, and, and uh, thought about uh, 
moving forward with a growth mindset and uh, even what a fixed mindset uh, means and what experiences you've had, you want to go through and do a little journal entry. And again, you can simply answer the question, what does growth mindset mean to you? Write a, you know, a paragraph or a few sentences, whatever you, you uh, feel comfortable with. Or and certainly, as with all of your journal entries, you can do a short video or put a uh, image that represents what you're trying to say. All right. So anyway, you've all done your journal entries, or most of you have, so you're familiar with how that works. Next up, and this is a big deal, uh, not just in school, but in uh, our daily lives, and that is time management. And this is a tricky situation, really, for all of us, because we're never going to really manage time. Uh, we are only going to be able to uh, maintain some flexibility and, and work with uh, what happens uh, that's out of our control from day to day. So I think flexibility is a big deal when it comes to, to time management, uh, but you also need to have a sense of, of uh, keeping track of what kinds of obligations you have, uh, whether it uh, is your homework assignments or exams or projects, uh, your work schedules, your sleep schedule, certainly, and of course, your family and friends and social time. So, um, so anyway, there's a little uh, time management assignment. Again, these are <clears throat> none of what we do in Gateway to Success is meant to be any kind of punishment or uh, punitive kind of busy work. Uh, it's all for your benefit um, in some way or another. So really, the experience is your own. So what you do with this and how far you go or how how whatever, whatever you do with it is up to you. So, um, and that holds true with everything that you do in this course. So anyhow, uh, I just, I don't want you to have any anxiety uh, or, uh, you know, anything that's, uh, that goes back to the growth mindset, right? So have a growth mindset and uh, with all of this and 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 uh, see where it fits and, and how it fits for you. But this is a really nice way of, of kind of uh, seeing where your time is spent and how uh, you can maybe uh, fit some other things in or maybe you're spread too thin. So uh, if you don't keep track of, of, if you don't really use a calendar, you don't keep track of how you spend your time and what you're doing, um, you, you definitely are going to want to check this out. Um, if you already do that, then this is going to be a breeze. All right. So anyway, uh, here are the directions. So you want to click that first. Okay. How to use the worksheet. Okay. You're going to fill in all of your classes. Some of you, maybe this is your only class and it's an asynchronous. So there really is. So the time management for this course really comes down to, to you, the student. You know, going back to our course delivery methods, you know, when you schedule a course to be face to face or hybrid uh, or uh, even OSYNC, you are locking in kind of a time slot that's already set for you by the college. When you do an asynchronous course, such as this one, you're the one who has to kind of determine when am I going to uh, make time to work on my course. So anyway, but even even when you do have these on-campus face-to-face courses, that's just a small part of the puzzle, right? That's a, that's a little bit of it. You still have a lot of uh, work to do and, and obligations for each of your courses uh, away from class. So, so anyway, fill in uh, when you have classes, uh, the hours that you work, if you do work, uh, the time it takes to get ready and all your prep and uh, travel time to and from, all of these different obligations, uh, any regular appointments that you might have, um, lunch, dinner, breakfast, I mean, everything, food prep, uh, food attainment, uh, when do you go to sleep, uh, when do you get up in the morning, uh, man, that's, you know, you start filling that in and, and I'll show you the, the worksheet in a second, but you start filling that in and then, uh, you, you start looking at, um, where do you have free time? Right. So 
that's going to be part B. You're going to look at uh, kind of where you have free time, assign time for studying. So where, like I said, you're going to fill in your classes, but where are you going to fill in time to get studying done uh, or prepping, whatever that means. Um, three to four hours for each hour spent in class per week. So if you have a one credit hour class like this one, ideally you'd spend three to four hours a week doing the work. Okay. If you have a four credit hour class, you may spend 10, 12, even up to 16 hours a week uh, outside of that class doing work. So keep that in mind. You know, if you have a 12 hour uh, schedule, you know, which a lot of you do if you're a full time student, that's 36, potentially up to 48 hours a week. Now, I'm not saying it's it's going to be that heavy and intense, but you may want to allow that much time. It's like a full time job, right? If you're a full time student. That's a full-time job, okay? Uh, study on the days that they meet. That's, again, just kind of a helpful hint uh, from my end too. You know, after you've watched the, the videos, you know, or after you've attended class, uh, whether, uh, you know, face-to-face -face or OSYNC, you know, try to, to stay in that zone. Take a little break, but go right back to it. So try to schedule your, your three to four hours a week of study time and to try to schedule those around uh, when you actually do have class. So you can kind of piggyback those. Again, if you can, I know you guys are busy. You're coming and going all over the place. You've got uh, work schedules and family obligations. and uh, So anyway, um, large blocks for major tasks, smaller blocks for reviews. So going with, you know, the, again, the studying time. Regular breaks, you know, too. So make sure you give yourself uh, some breaks when you're studying. Don't marathon study. And then, uh, if, you know, I don't think this is hard for any of you, but to make sure you're having fun along the way, especially nowadays. I mean, I think a, a lot of you are probably, um, you know, checking in on social media and, and uh, YouTube and whatever else you've got going on. TikTok. All right. So anyway access uh, the worksheet. So we have two formats. This is a PDF. If you don't have a PDF writer uh, program, you're going to have to download this. So you might as well get it in Word format. So I just, uh, I just click that and it gives me the Word format. So then you can type right into it. All right. So <clears throat> either one of those are fine. And it tells you here if you choose PDF, you have to print it out unless you have a writable uh, document. But anyway, you know how to fill out a chart. So that's what it is. I just had this one as 7 to midnight because um, it's this is 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., and so on. So this is 11 p.m. to midnight. So if you go past midnight, you know, if you work, you know, it's different schedule, different shifts, you can change those slots if you want. But anyway. Take this time management quiz. That's going to help uh, you with a lot of uh, kind of what's going on here. So again, these are short. They're not uh, they're not brain busters. Uh, they're more like questionnaires, maybe than quizzes. Okay, so make sure you take that, and then uh, once you've filled out your, okay, so you've got all of this. Okay, fill in all of this stuff. Again, it's yours though. These are not set in stone directions like in our instructions remember that right along the way with all of this that we do you can you this is for you not for me so you want to you want to uh, structure this in a way that that makes sense to you and if i you know if i if you're struggling with it and, and you know mention that when you submit it or if i notice something that seems maybe a little bit off i'll, I'll certainly uh, mention it but anyway, once you've filled all of that in and taken that little quiz, you want to answer these three questions. That's really what I'm going after. So when you submit to the Dropbox, again, just like all Dropboxes, you just click. Give, gives you all the instructions again, and then you can drop the worksheet. Mainly, I just need your worksheet, this, and then I need those three questions answered. Yeah, that's it. Primarily these three questions, but you know, you might as well throw in that 
that sheet too. Okay, so that's that. That's the big dog for this particular. Oops, I clicked all the way back out to monitors. There we go. Scoodly doop dop ba da Moving right along. There we go. Module two. Graduation timeline. Just uh, so we're shifting gears. Sorry, right, time management. If you have questions, certainly uh, send me an email and I can help you out uh, with that. Um, graduation timeline. Okay, all of you are here for different reasons. Uh, your majors are different. So when you graduate is different, but just know this, we go year round. So if you do wanna take summer, uh, courses they're the same as any other semester same length and everything so uh, so consider that this just shows you that you can be done if you're you know if, if two years to your degree if you're going roughly uh, 30 credit hours a year most of our programs are around 60 credit hours till you graduate okay so anyway I know, never too early to start thinking about graduation. Well, and again, with time management, things come up. You may find that, you know what, uh, 15 and 15 is a little too much. I think I'm going to back it down 12, 12, and I think I might take a class in the summer. So, so anyway, there are a lot of ways to do it. I mean, some students do uh, 15, 15, 15. They go full time, full bore year round, and they're done in like a year and a half. Okay, this next one is your program curriculum sheet review. So all of you, I would assume, have a major or have a program that you're in. So uh, there's a, a little program sheet review. This tells you uh, kind of the direction that we're going with this, but uh, it, it, in essence, it kind of reiterates what's already here. So. Um, we're going to go over here to the Gateway Technical College website. And it's, it's got a student handbook. Uh, this tells you how to find your curriculum sheet. So I'm going to go through that with you real quick. And this just shows you how to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it as well. So you're going to want to go to gtc.edu. And then you click Programs. Then you just find your program of study. Oh boy, what are we going to do today? I mean, all these look so great. I, I mean, don't they? You're, you're going to go on here and you're like, oh yeah, I was going to do accounting, but now that I see they've got barber technology or a horticulture technician, oh man, maybe I'm going to do that instead. Yes, look at all these, right? It, it's pretty amazing. I think they add more every semester it seems like okay. so anyway I don't know what your major is so I'm just going to pick one let's do uh, oh, that one looks fun I thought there was like we had some sort of uh, there we go green horticultural technician that sounds kind of fun and working with plants all day okay, so I get a horticulture and that's a technical diploma so it's going to be a little bit different but the idea is uh, all the same, no matter what your program is. You're gonna scroll down, it tells you how many credit hours your program is. Now certainly, like if I go back, that's 26. If we go to nursing, uh, they're at 66. So a um, little, depending on whether diploma or degree, uh, more credit hours or less credit hours. So. Uh, gives you a, kind of a salary outlook, really, really interesting details. So anyway, the, what you're going to do is come down and click program courses. And that's where the curriculum sheet is going to show up. Now, this curriculum sheet is going to give you some pretty nice info as to what classes you need to take and when you need to take them. It also tells you uh, what campuses they are on, uh, what time of day, and what semesters that are offered. So you're going to explore. I'm like, I don't want to give too much away, but that's what you're going to go after. So, so again, just go to the GTC website. 
And if you're not sure, just open that up and it'll tell you. Hit programs, find your program. There we go. Scroll down, electrician, okay. electronics. Click program courses, and there's your curriculum sheet. Open that up. And again, it tells you what term and the kind of the breakdown. Okay, you probably went through this with your advisor already, but um, I want you to answer a couple of these questions. Uh, number one, uh, required, which program are you enrolled in? All right, so, so put that for number one, and then pick any of these four questions here and answer those. You'll get that off of the sheet, and then pick any two of these. Okay. So you've got six questions to do the first, well, seven, but the first one is really you're just saying what your major is. So put that into a Word document and then put that into the Dropbox. Now, this one, many of you have probably already done. So all I want you to do, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Just if you've already met with your academic advisor, I just want you to go into the, you don't even have to do a document. Just open this up. You can go right into the comments area or even write submission. Okay. So then click write submission and then type in, I met with my advisor, type in their name, your advisor's name and uh, maybe the date or approximately when you did. Again, if you keep track of your schedule and you can go back and look, uh, you know, just put that in there when, when, when you met with them. I don't need that much detail. If you don't know it, that's fine. Uh, I just need to know whether or not you've met with your advisor. If you have not met with your advisor, then then you need to make it, then you need to read on and uh, make an appointment and meet with your advisor, either via Zoom or through email. And then do the same thing. I met with my advisor. We revisit this at the end of the semester. So if you haven't met with your advisor, just put, I haven't met with my advisor. I have an appointment with them, da 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 Leave it at that, okay? That's all you need to do. If you have met with them, put, I met with my advisor, and here's their name. Okay, so that's a slam dunker. Just do that, takes you 10 seconds. All right, we made it, we're at the end. Uh, there's one last little tidbit that you need to do. Um, we're going to talk about this uh, next week. So, but between now and next week, uh, I want you to go through and, and look at this Clifton Strengths Finder. Here are the step by step instructions. So, read through these instructions. They're very straightforward. They've got screenshots in here for you. It, so, it's very straightforward. Now, I do want to remind you when you create your account, you need to use your gateway email, okay? GTC dot whatever it is, student, whatever your email is for gateway, you need, that's what you need to use. Don't use your Gmail, okay? Because otherwise it won't, because all of you uh, are in the system for doing the strengths finder. If under your gateway email, student email, okay? All right, so anyway, it's very basic. You don't need to enter in you know, all kinds of stuff. You, know, you submit a credit card or any PayPal or Venmo or any of that stuff. Just uh, you know, fill in your name and create a password. Pretty much it. And then you'll get a verification code, so you enter that. Okay. And then from there, <clears throat> that's what the completed product's gonna look like. And then we're not gonna talk about that now, that's for next week. I, I just need you to get an account going and then I need you to take the actual assessment. You wanna set aside about 30 to 45 minutes to do this, okay? And once you've finished, you're gonna get, an, you know, you're going to get your top five strengths. The screenshot John put in here has his all of his strengths. So you're going to get one that's just going to look like this, and it's going to have these five, okay? Not these exact five. You're going to have five of the 34 based on the answers you said. Uh, okay. 
And then on that front page or the home page of your strengths finder, you're gonna see something that looks like that or something that looks like this. It's one or the other. Strengths Insight Guide is fine. I also have a video here from Oliver. You can watch that as well. It goes through in detail how to do this as well. And then once you're finished with that, um, I really uh, download your results uh, via the system Dropbox. We were, so that again, module three is when we do all of this. Okay, So you can, for 10 points, you just need to go in here and either do a screenshot, uh, submit a screenshot uh, that looks like this would be fine. So let's take a screenshot of this and put that in the Dropbox. All right, so it seems like you have a lot to do for module two. You really don't, there's several items, but none of them take an, an, you know, an inordinate amount of time to do. The, like the course, so, so let's do a quick review, course delivery and instructional types. I want you to spend maybe uh, 10 minutes on that at the most. And then the growth mindset and the growth mindset journal, you're going to spend a little longer because there are some videos. There are five or six videos. There's an article. Now, are you going to watch all of them? I don't know. That's up to you. Uh, you can watch one of them, none of them, all of them. Uh, you can read the article, skim the article, or do nothing with it. Uh, but uh, what you do need to do is submit a, a short journal entry regarding uh, what growth mindset means to you. All right, so spend anywhere from 10 minutes to, to half an hour doing that one. Okay. Same with time management. Uh, yeah, that one may take a good half hour to 45 minutes to really dig deep and to work on that. Take an hour on it. Take as much time as you want. We're talking about how much it's going to take you to do stuff. Well, think about that when you're doing your time management. All right, and this is, you don't have to do anything that. You can just ponder uh, for a few minutes on uh, walking down the aisle, graduation, and throw my cap in the air. Okay. So, and then uh, this one's probably the, the, the most uh, um, enlightening maybe for you if you haven't done any of this yet with your advisor or if you're unsure how to do it, there's your curriculum sheet. It outlines what courses you're going to take and, and you find some other cool stuff over there too. Okay, and then answer a couple of these questions along the way. Submit those into the Dropbox. You may spend about, I'd say, maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour, 15 minutes to a half an hour doing this one. You may already know some of these questions without going through all that, so that's up to you. Um, this one will take you about a minute, so click it. If you've already met your advisor, put in the text box, a uh, text submission that you met with them and, and what their name is. If you haven't met with them, just put that you haven't met with them and you're going to. And then lastly, you want to, th this is probably the most time consuming, but it's kind of cool. It's just kind of like a survey a type of uh, questionnaire, uh, a lot of personality questions and kind of uh, what would you do if faced with this uh, situation, da, 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 da. So you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Take your time with it. And, and again, when you're doing the strengths finder, just try to set aside, uh, like I say, a good half hour, 45 minutes, distraction free and, and just answer the questions with just how, what you feel and think at that moment. Don't try to think, don't overthink these is what I'm trying to say. Go with your instinct. It's going to ask you a question, a scenario potentially uh, some of them are very straightforward some of them are a little longer and then you just click what makes the most sense to you at that time don't overthink it because there are no right or wrong answers the, the, the right answer is whatever you picked okay and then uh, take a screenshot of of your results and submit that in the dropbox and that's it for module two so all told uh, probably gonna take you about two to three hours to get everything checked off. And again, speaking of checkoffs, you, you want to remember to, to go over and check out the uh, uh, course deliverables. These are the six items that we just went through. If you have questions, please send me an email and have a great week, everybody.